up your voice in song to the mighty one lift up your hands in praise fall on your knees at the throne of the holy one offer yourself to the ancient of days he is the light that shines in the darkness he is the rock that stands Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. Jesus Christ is Lord. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bend, every tongue proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm Father Al Lauer, glad to be able to share the Word of God with you, and we are beginning a series on how to build Christian community. And we've talked about this before. We've talked about a kind of seminars uh, I wish a person is brought into Christian community, but this is uh, not so much a series of seminars as a video version of a book on the nuts and bolts of how to build small Christian communities. All kinds of things, things that you don't even think about, things you don't even see any importance in until you start living in these Christian communities, especially if you start leading. Oh, there's so many practical things. We need wisdom. Wisdom is the first gift of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians in chapter 12, the first gift mentioned in Isaiah and chapter 11. And we hope and pray that this um, video form of, of this book on how to build small Christian communities would uh, be a way of God imparting his divine wisdom. Let's pray. Father, we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. We pray for everyone who is watching. We ask, Lord, that your word would burn in each person's heart. We pray for leaders of Christian communities, participants in Christian communities, and people who aren't even involved in anything like that. Lord, speak to each of our hearts. Lord, we know you're here. We know that when we come before you, when we hear your word, when we gather in your name, we're going to see your glory. So come, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to bless you all. Remember, how did you get into these Christian communities? When you were baptized, you were baptized into the body of Christ, into Christian community. Now, you may be living it, you may not be, but that's how you started. So it's not so much a question of, should I enter into Christian community? If you are already baptized, you've already got into it. Now, the question is, do I live it? Now, a little bit of a background. We're going to just go through, I don't know, 100 questions or something like that. I didn't count them, but there's just so many of them. But uh, just before we even get into that, I just want to give you my background. Did you, uh, some person might ask me, did you come out of the, out of the womb um, and uh, just be crazy about Christian community? Well, no, <laughs> no, all, all human beings are by nature communal, but not necessarily Christian community. Uh, another type of community, because of our fallen nature, we're into more or less a self-centered type community, which seems to be a contradiction in terms, but um, that's, where, that's what we find constantly. That's why we have so much conflict when we get together with people. But of course, I, I had no uh, great interest in Christian community. And even when I was baptized, and even when I became a priest, you'd think, well, gosh, this guy ought to be in the Christian community. Well, he ought to be, but ought to be doesn't mean I was. And, and you know, but I received a renewal of the Holy Spirit in 1975. The Holy Spirit was stirred into, into flame in my life. Uh, the Lord just saved my life there. It was, I, I'll thank Him forever. I pray I thank Him forever. And uh, that was a dramatic change from, from hardly any interest whatsoever in Christian community. Uh, I was really into it. And so I started trying to form Christian community. And, oh, I wish I had had this video series. I wish I had this book. I would have saved myself years of beating my head against the wall. One of, this, one of the advantages of failing and making a bunch of mistakes, there's not too many advantages in that. But one of the advantages is you can at least tell somebody else and prevent them from making the same blunders 
So that's what this video series is all about. So I started, I started what is often called a covenant community. And um, in our society in the United States, that usually means a big centralized community. At least it used to mean that. Word of God, community of God's delight, um, Lamb of God, people of praise. You know, they're large centralized covenant communities. So I tried to start a couple of those. Well, it just um, just didn't work out. Then I then I tried to form a parish community where they were kind of small communities all in a parish. That really looked wonderful. That was great. The only problem was I got transferred and then the new priest coming in, he wasn't too interested in that and the whole thing kind of went down the drain. Um, then we started another type of Christian community, small Christian communities, but not parish-centered, but, but diocesan-based. And um, kind of like what the Pope calls uh, communauté de base, that's French for basic communities. And uh, these are major movements of the Holy Spirit around the world. We started those in the United States. There are not many of them in the United States, but there's lots of them around the world. And wow, that, that did it. We have 30 communities, mostly in the Midwest, that are connected with each other. And even though that seems so small, it, it is so beautiful compared to all these things that, that I've been doing over the last 20 years. And so we've learned a lot in these 20-something years of building all kinds of communities, all Christian, but all quite different in their structure. And we learned about leadership development. We learned that leadership was the main thing. We learned about how communities should be structured. We learned about how communities need to be networked with each other. And we learned a lot of these things the hard way. And so, it, you know, when you learn things the hard way, it kind of shows you it's real important to learn them because you know what happens if you don't learn them. A lot of people say, all this, this stuff that you're bringing up, um, you know, it's really not that big a deal. You know, they're just little picky points. They don't mean that much. We have tried the route that you are thinking about. We've tried to, you know, just not worry about the detail. Let them take care of themselves. And we have uh, paid the price for that. So that's the background. You might say, well, you're an expert. Expert in failure. <laughs> you say, yeah, but have you changed? It seems like we have. We still have that weakness, but I guess we have received the wisdom of God because the fruit is good. And instead of the things falling apart, we start to see stability and growth. And so... It looks good. Now, in this long series of questions about building small Christian communities, uh, they can be subdivided in several ways, but I, I will just simply uh, give you general uh, divisions. First, what is Christian community? It's very important to get that question right. A lot of times people say, how? How do you do this? Show me how. You don't even know how to judge the how unless you know the what. There are all these different ways. Some people say, well, I think that's a good idea. And some people say, I don't think that's the best way of doing it. How do you determine? It depends on what God wants you to do. Not what you want to do, not what you think Christian community is, but what God wants. So the what is big. Why is our second division who should lead? As we said before, leading is what it's all about. In some ways, what we have done is decided not to form communities, but to form leaders who form communities. And then you get to the how. And there's a lot of detail there. There's a lot of wisdom there. There's a lot of spiritual warfare there. But what is Christian community? Why Christian community? And really, who should lead? Not just who should be in Christian community, but who should lead? And then how? So what, why, who, how? 
All right. First question of, um, I, don't, I never counted them. It would scare me if I counted them. First question of all these questions, and probably the most important of, of the hundred questions, whatever it would be. What does God mean by Christian community? Now, remember, if you don't get the, have the right question, you won't get the right answer. It, not what do I think Christian community is, or what do others think will work in this situation. No, but, but what does God mean? I think most of us, and this is what I have been at fault with in my life, we ask the question, uh, what will work in this situation? And we say, well, no use trying something that really isn't practical. If it's God's will, we should try something that really isn't practical. And if it's not God's will to go with the practical, we should be impractical. So I did things that, that I, I knew the people pretty well, and I was a parish priest, so, you know, way, one way my life is just really seeing God work in people. And so I kind of knew where people were, and I kind of knew where people were not. And so we tried to work out some community building that would be where people are. And I thought, well, that makes all the sense in the world. That might make all the sense in the world, but I'm still uh, assuming some things. I'm just assuming that the practical is what's it, what it's all about, and that's not necessarily true. You look at the Bible for that one. Um, I'm assuming you want to do something that a lot of people can relate to. Well, well maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, so I had some false assumptions there. So you should step back from those false assumptions and, and not ask the question, what will work? But ask the question, what does God mean by Christian community? That's a very important question. The word Christian community now is it means almost anything you can think of. If you say Christian community to some people, they'll say, um, um, isn't that donuts and coffee after mass? Uh, well, no, that's, uh, that would be a nice thing, but uh, Christian community is, uh, is much more than that. Uh, well, some people say Christian community, isn't that some kind of Jimmy Jones suicide cult? Uh, no, 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 we're not talking about that. Um, say, well, we already got Christian community. We have Bible studies in our church. We have a renewed group in our church. We have prayer groups in our church. Uh, so we already have Christian community. Groups are wonderful, but groups are not community. Groups may have aspects of community, but that doesn't make them community. So that's a real serious confusion, confusing groups with community. Then uh, back to the question, what does God mean by Christian community? Now, before we break the news, we've got to get this right. God has said, if you base your community, your life on my will, then it will stand. The rain's coming, the storm's coming, the wind's coming. It's going to hit your house, your community house, but that's all right. But it will stand if it's based on hearing and doing my word, doing my will. So what is God's will for Christian community? And if we're doing his will, it's going to last if we're not doing His will, even though it's a very good thing that we're doing, we are doomed. God is not committed to back up our ideas. God is not committed to back up good things. God is committed to give stability and growth to His thing and only His thing. I was reading in Psalm 33, verses 10 and 11, and I think this expresses what I'm trying to get across. The Lord brings to naught the plans of nations. He foils the designs of peoples. But the plan of the Lord stands forever. Make sure that what you're calling Christian community. Now, some people will use the word, but just because you use the word doesn't mean you've got the real thing. God doesn't just bless right terminology. He blesses reality that is according to his will. And he says, he foils the designs of peoples, 
but the plan of the Lord stands forever. The design of his heart through all generations. Now we want Christian communities to last till Jesus comes back. And if we're going to get something like that, we've got to make sure it is the Lord's idea. The plan of the Lord stands forever. Okay, we've uh, talked about how important this question is. What does God mean by Christian community? First thing he means by Christian community, John 17, 21, the, Jesus prays that we would be one as he and the Father are one. And that means Trinity unity. So what does God mean by Christian community? A sharing in the unity of the Trinity. Trinity unity. Second thing or way of saying what God means by Christian community, it's what Jesus had with his 12 apostles. Now, Jesus didn't just run into these 12 apostles. He chose them to be disciples, and then he chose them to be apostles. Jesus' community was, as sociologists would call it, intentional. It, it wasn't just a few people just kind of naturally getting together. No, it was intentional. They were, there was the actual choosing of the people. There was a... Um, um, a clear, defined commitment to the other people as brothers in the Lord. So Jesus' community with the apostles, that's another way of saying what God means by Christian community. And the thing about that was these people were chosen to be in this community chosen by Jesus. They knew they were in the community. If you ask Jesus, Who's, who are your 12 apostles? He, would not, he wouldn't just say, well, you know, there's all kinds of people who kind of kind of get into the apostleship thing on occasion and I just hang around with various people and we really don't pin it down. Oh yeah, he did pin it down. Okay, a third way of bringing this up, what does God mean by Christian community? The community we see in Acts of the Apostles. That's what God means by Christian community. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' instruction, the communal life, the breaking of the bread and the prayers, Acts 2 and 42. They, uh, they saw great gifts of God working in the community. They shared things materially. They shared their meals in common. Um, this, this sharing of life in Christ, in fact, you might say, daily sharing of life in Christ. That's what we mean by Christian community. So especially that's what God means by Christian community. So when we say, what does God mean by Christian community? Trinity unity. What does God mean by Christian community? Jesus choosing the apostles. What does God mean by Christian community? The daily sharing of life that we see in Acts of the Apostles. Those are three ways of expressing what God means by Christian community. If you understand these three things, you might say, well, you know, I don't think most people are really open to that. All they want is a, just a little bit of a friendliness, a little bit of support. They don't want any of this big, heavy-duty commitment type stuff. We're not saying what people want. We're saying what God wants. If a thousand people want something, who cares? If God wants it, let's do it. What if nobody wants what God wants? Well, you better want what he wants. Okay, more about this. Let's, let's, let me give you um, other characteristics or other ways of saying it. Christian community has five characteristics. Trinitarian, we already said what that means. We've been baptized in the, in the, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christian community is baptismal. How'd you get into Christian community when you were baptized? 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, it was in one spirit that all of us, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, were baptized into one body. Because Christian community is a baptismal, we've been baptized into God's family, and we've been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That means Christian community is a matter of Christian brotherhood and sisterhood. We're not talking about friendship here. We're not talking about just knowing people. We're talking about 
family, not, not husband-wife relations, not parent-child here. We're talking about brother-sister relationships. That's the third point. Christian community is Trinitarian. Christian community is baptismal. Christian community is fraternal, brotherly, sisterly. Okay, the fourth point, because Christian community is um, Trinitarian, baptismal, and fraternal, oh, the, the relationships there are, um, are, are ones of communion, or that really doesn't do justice to it. The Pope coins a word and says communio, which means baptismal, brotherhood, sisterhood, unity in Christ, togetherness in the Lord, but, but better than that, more than that, and it's called communio. And then, of course, because um, Christian community is um, based on our baptism into the new and abundant life of the Trinity, well, it is obviously a daily sharing of life in Christ. We already mentioned some of these points, but uh, five characteristics of Christian community by God's standards. Trinitarian baptismal, fraternal, communio. It'll be an expression of communion and it will be the daily sharing of life in Christ. Now, when you look at these five characteristics or you look at these three biblical bases or really expressions of Christian community, the Trinity, Jesus and the Apostles, and Acts of the Apostles, you know, you really can see that like a Bible study isn't necessarily fitting that description. Um, you might say, well, couldn't it move on and fit that description? Could be, but I think people need to really make a decision that Christian community is, is something much, much more. A Bible study is to Christian community as a date is to a um, marital covenant. You know, just because you go out on a date doesn't mean you're going to be married for 50 years, you know. Uh, do, do, do you see what I mean? Say, well, Christian community, it's just, um, I don't know if we would have time for anything like that. Well, <laughs> I don't think we'd have time for too much else. It's the priority. Okay, to clarify this more, sometimes to clarify what something is, it's good to say what something is not. What Christian community is not. Let me say three things. I've already said these. It's not a group. Groups meet, wonderful, but we're talking about something else. It's not merely friendship. Now, people in Christian community could be friends, just like a husband and wife could be friends, but they're not just friends. You know, friends, you know, you can make a friend, you can leave a friend. But when we're talking about brothers and sisters, you just don't make brothers and sisters. Christian community is not, and this is really important, not a nuclear family or even an extended family. Now, some families, Christian families, have a better, deeper communio than a Christian community does, especially in the early stages of that Christian community. And so there, there's really better community with an extended family, if it's really Christian, than there is with a Christian community. But that whole idea of Jesus choosing the 12, of that intentionality. See, with a, with a family, even though you make a commitment to love each other, you know, you didn't really like choose these people for your community. And... Um, that's not the main point. The main point is you aren't intentional about other things. For example, an extended family, they are not planning on branching off and, and getting new extended families. They're not thinking of evangelistic outreach. They, they're not thinking of um, providing for a continuity of leadership into the, the next generation. Uh, they, they just um, figure, well, we're a family here and we'll wait till the kids grow up and 
once they grow up, that's that. And I guess they'll have their own families then. But, but they don't see that original family continuing. See, it's not, there's not plans for the future. There's not plans for continuity of leadership. There's not plans for development. There's not plans for evangelization. Now, that doesn't mean a nuclear family or even an extended family that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, it's just saying that's not what we mean by Christian community. Christian community is looking towards the future and future leadership and future development. Christian community is looking for the, um, many, many more communities. Like I grew up in an extended family where th there was a real Christian co uh, community there. At least there was that community spirit. But are there a lot of these communities here since, uh, since I grew up? No, there, that one was good. And, and then when we all grew up, that was the end of that. See, it didn't extend. It didn't expand. It didn't go on. It didn't go out. Christian community does that. And a real good Christian family, as good as it is, usually isn't a planning for the future and for the gospel to be taken to the ends of the earth. Okay, we're running out of time here. Father, we just pray that we would get this straight, what Christian community is, what Christian community is not, and knowing that if we do your will, you'll back it up, and it will last until your son's second coming and give you glory forever. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. At the throne of the Holy One Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days He is the light that shines in the darkness He is the rock that stands Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb